Hi Andy, it's great to be speaking with you today. Now, you're Director of Media Relations at Pfizer, but can you just clarify what your role is and what kind of projects you get involved in? I'm Director, as you say, of Media Relations. Uh, so that covers far more than uh, the digital space. Um, it's very much about positioning the company um, you know, appropriately um, and positioning our, our medicines and our, our work appropriately through the media via either proactive campaigns uh, or responding to the many inquiries that they may have about, about uh, uh, Pfizer and its role in the industry and role in society. Um, it's also a geographic, geographically wide remit um, covering Europe, Middle East, Africa, um, which you know, naturally there's, there's different cultures, different languages, um, and then you know, as part of that, then looking very closely at uh, the our corporate presence in social media and in digital platforms and you know, how that looks and, and takes shape, you know, considering all of those um, cultural and, um, and ling linguistic differences across the region. Now, as someone who's worked in communications for quite a number of years, what does social media mean to you and how is it changing corporate communications? Well, it's a very interesting area. Um, social media, I, the first thing to say is it's, it's media. Um, so um, if we were to go back 10, 20 years, then you know, sort of people would have understood quite clearly that, that media refers to, to the broadcast, print, um, media produced by um, sort of professional organizations, media companies. Uh, the, the, the internet, of course, has changed many things. Um, it's meant that those uh, professional um, uh, media outputs um, have been, been given a new platform, um, but also social, um, the social element has really started to, to shine through. Um, and and it really, the internet is social. It's become a social place. Uh, whether you're, you're buying something from, from a, an online store where you can comment on it, um, whether you're, you're, you're able to share your thoughts in a blog or in a tweet or um, connect with people um, via, via social networks. All, all of those elements I see as sort of social media. There are some people, of course, who would argue that within the highly regulated pharma industry, social media is not appropriate, it's not relevant. What would your response be to them? I think social media is, is something that really, at the end of the day, is connecting people. Um, and you know, whether it's a radio phone-in show, that could be seen as a social media, or whether it's a, a discussion on Twitter, or whether it's a group on Facebook, um, they're all about connecting people. And you know, the pharmaceutical company is regulated you know, for good reason, um, but we're about um, you know, connecting with people, whether it's you know, to improve health, whether it's through our research and you know, the clinical trials and, and, and so forth, or whether it's through understanding how our medicines help or any issues around our medicines. You know, it's about our connection with people, be they healthcare professional, be they patient, be they another stakeholder. So I'd say, yes, there are challenges, but we need to, we need to carry on thinking about those challenges and, and look at the ways in which we can use social media in order to improve the way we do, do, our, do our work. So do you think we need more detailed regulations around social media use from the FDA or from the European authorities? Well, it's a hot topic. Um, there's no denying that. Um, yeah, we have, we have regulations around the principles of, of what we say uh, to whom uh, and how we, we conduct our business. And yeah, those apply whatever the media or whatever the medium. So I think that many of the principles are already there. Um, yeah, further guidance on how that works in, these, the, the, in, a, in a conversational way um, you know, is something I know everybody's considering. I don't have the answer. The other thing that I would, I would say is that you know, one of the challenges is that you know, we're used to having private conversations uh, with, with individuals. Doctors, consultations are a, a private event. Um, you know, one of the, the main challenges seems to be that um, in social media it's, it's quite a public thing. And you know these conversations uh, in certain networks will be will be one to many or many to many, and that I think is a is a challenge for for us in the pharma industry. I think it's also um, part of the challenge for for other regulated industries. 
And from a Pfizer perspective, what kind of objectives are you looking to achieve as a company through use of social media? Pfizer is engaging in social media in a number of different areas. Um, and actually, the way we like to look at it is that we are not engaging in social media because it's there. Um, what we're trying to do is look at what, uh, what benefits can we bring to the particular stakeholders, be they um, you know, our customers, doctors, or regulators, or the end user, the patient, and does, is there a, a digital way of reaching them effectively uh, and getting the message across in, in a different or a new way? So, you know, corporately, getting across our, our, um, uh, our corporate position, um, the value of the company to, to, to shareholders, to patients, to doctors, then you know, we've really sort of started by going and putting a corporate presence on a number of different networks, um, you know, Facebook, Twitter, um, SlideShare, YouTube. Meanwhile, where, there's, where we've seen uh, an opportunity where we think we can make a difference um, with particular therapy areas or particular, um, particular public health awareness campaigns, then we, we've looked at, at opportunities and we have entered into, into the social media space. Um, a lot of work has been done around uh, counterfeit messaging, patient safety. We know the internet in the Western world is a place unfortunately where a lot of counterfeits seem to be found, so it seemed appropriate. We've also managed to drive networks of um, you know, interested parties, um, patient groups as well as ourselves, uh, in looking at um, the way pain is diagnosed. And it, you know, again, all of these examples are around finding the appropriate method of, of communicating as opposed to saying, we must be in social media. Now, I guess one challenge for a big company like Pfizer can be the perception of big global corporates being faceless entities rather than engaging in personal communication. So how do you deconstruct that and get that personal interaction through social media? Um, yes, I, I mean, I can see that, you know, sort of much of the the day-to-day -day use of social media is very personal. Um, you know, indiv it's the individual that has a Facebook page. It's the individual that has a Twitter Twitter feed. Um, yeah, what we've tried to do is uh, change our tone in the way we, we communicate if we are sending a, a message out via, via one of these networks. Um, we've also tried to make strides to, um, uh, you know, to actually put a face to some of our, our social media presences. So um, yeah, our Twitter feed, our main corporate Twitter feed is um, offering news and updates from, from you know, a company listed on, on the stock exchange. Uh, but yeah, we have um, the picture, the name, the face on the profile of, of, the, uh, of the colleague who is actually operating that Twitter feed. So it's kind of a, uh, looking at each of these networks and just trying to, to shift the needle in terms of, of personalization wherever we can. Now I have to ask you, of course, Pfizer was recently subjected to a Facebook attack. It took down your Facebook page. Uh, and of course, Ray Kerrin's reasserted Pfizer's commitment to using social media. But do you think things like that put off other pharma companies from getting involved in these channels? I hope not. Um, yeah, yes, you know, one of those expressions that we find out there in in the social media conversations around around pharma in 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 this space is one of those hashtags of fail better. Um, and I think. We've got to be got to be honest and say, you know, there are a number of things we learned about that incident. Um, I think we're very lucky in the fact that we were able to react quickly. Yes, we took the page down, but it came. We put it back up again pretty quickly and and made steps to ensure um, that we weren't going to be in the same situation again. Um, you know, has it deterred anybody else? I, I, I genuinely hope not. Um, you know, I hope that. You know, by, by sharing with other pharma companies some of the, the, the things we learnt that, that we can um, give people the confidence to, to, to carry on. Um, again, um, the important thing is, here really is we're not doing this for you know, self-gratification. We're doing this because we think we can make a difference and if we stand by that then yeah, we will, we're not going to pull away from something um, you know, due to the, 
you know, so, sort of a, uh, an unfortunate but you know, frankly sort of silly incident. And what initiatives are you most proud of, Andy, from your time at Pfizer? That's always a difficult. I think one of the most difficult things to answer. Um, I'm, yeah, there are various projects that have been run by uh, colleagues in different parts of the world that you know are, are notable. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, but I'm pleased to see that we've, you know, we've actually approached this in a in a, in a structured way. So, you know, approaching it in the way that I've described in in terms of why we're using it. Um, taking a cautious approach to, to getting involved in the main networks um, and you know, finding ways of, of connecting with uh, other stakeholders through um, you know, Man MOT project in the UK or Can You Feel My Pain in, in, in Europe, I think are, are, um, are fantastic examples of what can be done. There's, there's plenty more that could come after this. Um, and I'd say, if you were to ask me honestly, um, I'm pleased that more and more people in the company are, are recognising some of the opportunities um, and yeah, it's been a sort of internal sort of engagement process of, of making sure that, you know, uh, that, that Pfizer colleagues are, are, are looking at the social media and considering it sensibly as an as a option to do a whole bunch of things that could, could really help our work in the healthcare uh, system. And looking beyond Pfizer, what other activities do you see taking place which have been influential on what you're doing and you think are raising the bar with regards to social media engagement? There are uh, a number of projects from, from a number of pharmaceutical companies that um, are very notable that I'm sure you, know, you will be covering it in this series. Um, certainly, I, you know, to name a few, um, you know, Boehringer and Gilheim are doing you know, great stuff on, on Facebook, um, as is Janssen. Um, you know, some of the, you know, there are many Twitter feeds um, from various companies um, in various geographies that are, that are making a difference. But beyond um, thinking about it from that perspective, um, you know, actually it's the, the owners of the social networks um, that are actually helping make a difference. Um, as they improve their services, um, you know, sometimes they're pushing uh, us into into using these networks for better conversation as opposed to simple broadcasting, um, and I think yeah that that's very important. I also think that actually society at, at large, I mean, media companies are uh, are using um, Twitter and Facebook in their their broadcasting in their in their print efforts, which are driving more and more people into these networks and becoming comfortable with having uh, conversations on the internet that. That, that mean you know, this is where people are and um, you know, that's where we have an opportunity to connect with um, healthcare professionals, patients as appropriate. Andy, thanks very much for your thoughts. It's been great speaking with you. You too. Pharmaforum.com is the dynamic online information and discussion portal for the pharmaceutical industry.